Hey folks, how's it going? This is Steve with Easy Concrete back with you. This is Matt. Hey, uh, today we're going to go over uh, the flake floor we started last week. Um, so the way this works is uh, what you would do is you, the flake you have on the ground, you can reclaim all of this and reuse it on other projects if you have people that want to use this flake on other projects. So if this is the back of your garage on this side here, you can take an electric leaf blower and blow all that excess flake to the back of the garage so you can reclaim it for later use. Uh, you don't want to start scraping it as it is because then you're going to have uneven flakes. Uh, you definitely want to get back as much as you can because we laid a lot of flake here with keeping in mind that you're going to use it for later projects. So definitely reclaim what you can here. Uh, we're not going to show you that on camera, super boring. Um, but go ahead and do that and then you're going to want to start scraping your floor with an 18 inch floor scraper and we're going to show you how to do that now. Yeah, so as, as Steve said, we're not going to bore you guys with it. Um, make sure you guys don't use gas leaf blowers. I have an, everybody has their opinion on it. I don't like it. It causes contaminants to be in the air that could potentially fall in when you guys are going to put your top coat down. So yeah, if you guys give us just a sec, we're going to go ahead and reclaim the top flakes and then we'll get to the scraping process. We'll be right back. Be right back. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you how I just used a push broom to go ahead and push everything off. That is another option if you guys don't have an electric leaf blower, things of that nature. You just want to get as much flake as you can off the top. Because once again, Steve said that you can reclaim it, and you can. You can put that back in a box, you can use it on another job, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> when you're scraping the floor, you want to go north, south, east, west. You want to go all four directions. That way you get an even coat of flake across the top of the floor. Um, you don't need a lot of pressure for this, guys. You literally can just have nice little pressure. And I'm just going to do this all the way across the floor. Like I said, it's going to get kind of loud, so I don't want to bore you guys. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and time lapse this, and you'll watch me do it. <laughs> So as you guys can see, I went in all four directions. Um, it's getting caught on the tape a little bit, but I went in all four directions. We now have a nice even consistency on the floor. I'm gonna try to go ahead and get a little bit of the loose flakes that are up on here. That way when we put our top coat down, we don't have an, a bunch of excess that's gonna be going on a roller and everything else and kind of transferring over. So if you guys give me just a sec, we'll be right back. Welcome back folks, long time no see. This is Steve. Uh, we're going over the mixing process for your polyaspartic top coat. Uh, what we have here is PPS85 uh, through Pure Epoxy. This is a two component system. So we have part A, part B, one to one mix ratio, super easy. I'm gonna use our squat cups here, mix it in our bucket, apply it to the floor, spread it out, super easy work. All right, folks, uh, so for this next part, we're gonna use pretty much the same tools we used before, a little bit different. We are going to use a magic trowel, a straight blade trowel to pull out the product before we back roll it. You're gonna want it at about 100, 110 square foot uh, per gallon. So that's what we're gonna do now. Matt, you wanna pour me some out? Absolutely. Again, you'll be wanting to use your spikes for this. Um, you just don't wanna leave any footprints in the top, of the top finish. Again, you're gonna pull it, applying a little bit of pressure, just getting a nice even spread on it and keeping a wet edge so your roller can pour into and prime his roller. <clears throat> yeah, so while Steve's pulling that out, uh, same thing guys, we're gonna prime that roller as best as we can. Squeegee guy's not really gonna have to worry about the corners too much. Uh, what Steve does want to do, especially for the roller guy, uh, makes it easier. He does want to come down about, you know, normally about a foot down the wall. It'll help you guys keep that nice edge uh, all the way down the wall. That way your corner or your edge guy doesn't have to do as much. So. I'm apply a little bit more product for Steve. Looks like I ran a little short. Just a little bit more. Doesn't have to be perfect. The roller will transfer a lot across the floor, so. <clears throat> now rolling with your top coat, guys, is gonna be 
uh, a little bit different than before, right? You don't want to leave any roller marks, so Steve left me a nice little wet edge here. Uh, you do want to go ahead, we are going to do a W pattern across the floor. Same thing. Once we get that W pattern across that floor, the key thing is, say, like you said, this is the back of our garage. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out this direction and then I'm going to feather off, okay? Same for this. I'm going to go ahead and start here and I'm going to feather off. I'm going to do that all the way across that garage floor. And then vice versa, what happens is when I'm going back the opposite direction, we've got a wet edge here, so we're going to pour back into this wet edge. And when I'm approaching that area where I feathered off, what I'm actually going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to go, instead of pulling this direction, I'm going to push towards that feathered edge, right? So I've got my feathered edge all the way across here. I'm actually going to go ahead, I'm going to W pattern this section, get that product spread out nice and even. And now I'm going to push towards that feather edge and right where that line would be, I'm going to feather up as well. Roller marks can potentially be a little weird in this aspect. You just want to be nice and easy with it. That way you don't have these 18 inch roller marks across the floor. Other than that, you guys have completed your flight floor. Yes, sir. That is, uh, that's your final day. You're going to let this dry and for the most part be done. Yeah. So if you guys have any questions or anything, please don't hesitate. Contact us at Easy Concrete here. Uh, and if you guys want to see, once again, a particular video, if you have any specific aspects of the floor that you are concerned about, comment, email us, inbox, whatever you guys are most comfortable with. If you're seeing this video, you know how to get a hold of us. So get a hold of us however you can. Let us know what you need to know or give us pointers. I'm, if we do something wrong, yell at us. <laughs> yeah, for real. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Easy Concrete University. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Have a good one.